welcome to Board Game Casual Design Diaries. And in this video, we're gonna go a little off topic from board games. Instead, I thought I'd show you these no flame medieval style LED torches that I built. I made these as a Halloween decoration, but if you've got a themed game room or maybe wanna build some epic props for a night of playing dungeon crawlers, then you might find these pretty cool and wanna build something similar for yourself. The metal sides of the torch cage are made from three quarter inch wide aluminum flat bar, which I cut into lengths and then shaped it with a bench vise to get the bends. While I was originally planning to have to bend the flat bar into circles as well for the inner frame, I decided to make things easy on myself by buying some four inch stainless steel English muffin tart rings uh, from Amazon. This made things so much easier because they were already perfect circles and I didn't have to worry about them not being even if I were bending them myself. I drilled four evenly spaced holes into each ring and three holes in each of the four sides of the torch and bolted everything together with some panhead machine screws and nuts. I cut both of the ends of the flat bar into points and sanded them down so they wouldn't be too sharp. Then I curled the bottom ones out with the vise and a pair of pliers little by little just to give them a little more flair. If I were to do it again, I might consider making the flat bar lengths longer so I could have uh, more of a curl at the bottom. I also debated about flaring the points outward on the top, but I ultimately decided I like the look of them going straight up. The bottom of the cage tapers inward to mate with some PVC coupling, which will tight fit a standard E26 weatherproof socket. The flame effect comes from an LED flame bulb that screws into a normal socket. You can buy these things anywhere. There are a ton of different brands on Amazon. I used some additional PVC and couplers to give me enough room to hold the wire ties and then drilled out a PVC end cap to be able to screw it into a conduit coupling to attach to some one half inch metal electrical conduit. Because I was building these things to go around my yard, I went an extra step and put in some electrical boxes and sockets. It was important to me that I could easily daisy chain the torches from one to another, so that rather than having to run separate power to each torch, I can simply plug one torch into another that's already plugged into power somewhere. Each torch is powered by a 25 foot extension cord where I cut off the female side and wired it to the electrical socket instead. Then I wired the electrical socket up to the light socket up through the conduit. Now, if you wanted to skip the wiring altogether, they sell USB rechargeable versions of flame bulbs as well. I have a few of these and they work pretty good. This makes your torches ultra portable and able to be used anywhere. I painted the torches with some hammered metal effects spray paint to give them a wrought iron look. I originally thought I would simply build these as something you'd just stick into the ground, but I started to worry that they might be a little heavy and was nervous about them tipping over in soft dirt. So instead I bought some patio umbrella stands to use as a base. This also makes them more versatile to be used anywhere, like if I wanted to move them onto a patio or even indoors. The umbrella stands expect a thicker diameter pole, so I just use some PVC pipe as a shim. This next step probably wasn't necessary, but since these were gonna be outside, to protect them from any rain, I used some glass jars by putting them upside down over the bulb as a cover. I put some longer machine screws in the middle of the frame, giving the jar something to rest on, rather than having the jar rest directly on the bulb itself. At night, you can't even tell the jars are there, and if anything, they kind of help diffuse the light. Along the same line, since mine are positioned way out in the yard, you basically lose any detail of the metalwork in the dark. So I experimented with a super easy, cheap, bolt together version. In this version, I just bought an outdoor spotlight socket that was already threaded, which means it could be screwed in directly to an electrical box or some threaded conduit coupling. Then I bought some basic light cages that just clamp around the spotlight sockets. And I wired up the socket in the box just like the other version. Here's a pro tip. These types of cages are like 20 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's. And honestly, they're a little too big in my opinion. On Amazon, however, I was able to score a cheap four pack for only 12 bucks. And I was stoked because these were much smaller and better proportioned for the torch look. I also went super cheap by making the base out of some scrap two by fours that I just painted black. Now in the daytime, these don't look nearly as good as the ones I shaped out of flat bar, but at night, 
and from a distance, you can barely tell the difference. I actually think a good solution is somewhere in between, using the cage as a base, and then attaching some framing components or some flat bar to make it look a little more medieval. I'm really happy with the way both versions of the torches came out, but especially the ones I handmade from the aluminum flat bar. I'm kind of obsessed with these flame bulbs. I've been using them in lanterns as well. They give off such a great ambiance and look really realistic in my opinion without actually having to use any fire. So I'm all about making a bunch of these, especially for Halloween. The more you have, the even more impressive they look. I hope you found this video useful and maybe it inspires you to make some of your own torches. In the next episode of Design Diaries, we'll go back to focusing on some tips for prototyping your games. Thanks for watching, thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.